Well, hello, rally friends, and welcome back to my kitchen table. This is a pre-rally Catalonia kitchen table, and I'd like to welcome along to my kitchen table a new mug for you. We talked about this in the last one, didn't we? Uh, the fact that, yeah, I love my Oregon Trail rally mug, but, but a variety is always nice. And, well, I've had a few sent through to me, and this is the first one. It's the Ford Fanatics of South Wales. Great bunch of guys, as the name suggests, all absolutely mad daft about Ford. A group of lads got together a few years ago, set up this little ffsw.co.uk website, really to talk about all things fabulous about Fords. And it's grown, and they've got over a thousand members. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter. Have a little look, www.ffsw.co.uk. Guys, thank you for the mug, it really is much appreciated. Hmm. Right, let's talk Rally Catalonia. We're getting towards now, aren't we? The pointy end of this year's championship. It's getting so, so interesting. Three drivers in with a shout of winning it. Very much we're watching Nouville and Auger, but let's not write off Oit Tanak. And I'll tell you why, because I think Tanak will win the next two events. I think he will win in Catalonia, and I think we will go to Australia and he will win there. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's have a look at Catalonia. What can we expect this weekend? Well, it is, as we know, the only mixed surface event on the calendar. On the Friday, we're on the gravel. The Saturday and the Sunday, we're on to the tarmac. And it's the gravel, really, that defines the outcome of this event. And what we've seen over the last few years is, you know, those conditions on the Friday can change. We're into, well, we're into autumn, aren't we? Very much late. Well, it is late autumn. I guess it is. We're heading towards winter. And the conditions can be very varied. We can get some fantastic weather. We can get some truly awful weather in the hills above Salou. Uh, now, we did see some truly awful weather last weekend. Massive amounts of rain in that region. And there was damage to roads. Not necessarily the rally roads, but roads were damaged. A lot of standing water, a lot of flooding around. But in the four or five days since then the weather's been magnificent up to 24 25 degrees they're forecasting by friday that if things stay as they are is enough for the roads to dry out and if it stays as forecast which is round about 24 25 degrees for friday there will be dust it will be dry there will be a road cleaning effect for sure for thierry nouville being first on the road but here's the thing they're forecasting some rain and that rain might come early. For sure the rain is forecast for Saturday. Is it going to come early enough to save Neuville? Well, right now, we're well, Wednesday morning. Well, it's looking less and less likely, but that rain could help Thierry Neuville if it arrives early. It is unlikely to. So Neuville has got a job on his hands this weekend, a very, very big job indeed. He may be saved by the dust, and we've seen that being an issue on Friday in the past. You know, a few years ago, it was a terrible problem. But generally now, they go with three minute gaps and that is enough to allow the next car, more or less, to have a dust free drive through. It does make it difficult because we start those stages early on the Friday, even just the smallest amount of hanging dust in the air, the sun's relatively low, the dust through the sun makes visibility very difficult. So yes, Neuville will have a completely clear road, but he will have a fair old job to do in terms of cleaning that road. The boys behind him might be slightly compromised by the dust. We'll have to wait and see. The other thing we've seen in the past though on the Friday, and this all depends on atmospheric conditions and weather conditions, is occasionally we've had a heavy, heavy dew in the hills. Remember those hills are quite high up. They're certainly higher than Salou. They're about six or 700 meters above the altitude of Salou. And with the cooler overnight temperatures at those altitudes, you do get this heavy dew. Now we saw it a few years ago. I can't remember what year it was. Maybe the first year, second year that we did the first day on gravel. And it was Sebastian Loeb. Everyone expected him to be really, really compromised. And he just sailed away into the distance. First car on the road because there was no rain. But that heavy dew was enough to dampen down the surface, to bind that loose gravel together and to give him that little advantage that he needed. So there are things that we need to look out for on the Friday. If I was a betting man, I'd say dry and dusty and compromised heavily for Thierry Nouvelle. 
What we know is that Friday defines the result of this rally. So Neville could have a few issues here. He really could being first on the road. You know, if you lose 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds maybe on day one being first on the road, it's almost impossible to get that back through the remaining kilometres on tarmac. We know that yes, if you have the drive of your life on gravel, you can make up 20, 30, maybe even 40 seconds in a day, maybe on a long day. But on tarmac, it's almost impossible. The drive of your life against drivers in similar cars competing at a similar level might only get you 10 or 15 seconds. So Neville could be in a little bit of bother, as could Ogier to some extent. But all Ogier has to do this weekend is finish ahead of Neville. But, but, here's the interesting thing. He doesn't want to finish too far ahead of him. Because the gap between Neuville and Auger, seven points in the championship. You want a 10 point lead to feel comfortable going to Australia because Australia first on the road is notoriously difficult. So there'll be a lot of, you know, if things stay as they are and we don't have mechanical problems, we don't have drivers making mistakes, we have Neuville, Auger, Tanak still in the fight on the Sunday. There will be some calculations being made as to where potentially drivers want to finish. You know, Neuville would dearly love to finish ahead of Ogier, but if Ogier finishes just two or three points behind in this event, he will still think he's got a fantastic chance going to Australia. You know, if Neuville finishes behind Ogier and Ogier only finishes a position or two ahead of him, further down the standings perhaps, and it only goes with six or seven points, you know, we, we could see tied points going to Australia. We could see Ogier with a point or two lead. That is not a good position to be in going to Australia. The man who's got no pressure on him and who just has to drive for a win is Tanak. Tanak can and will still play a part in this championship fight because I think he will win in Spain and then he will go to Australia and I think he will win in Australia as well. It's then up to the other two to make sure they don't do anything silly and open that door to Oit Tanak who if the door is open to him, he will bury the ball in the back of the net. There'll be no threatening the corner flags as we've seen in the past. If Tanak is given the opportunity, bang, and he will bury it. But can he, can he, can he operators, in particular Ogier and Nouvelle? And as I say, it is going to be fascinating to see what transpires come Sunday lunchtime in terms of this battle for the lead in the championship and who wants to go to Australia first on the road and what kind of lead you feel comfortable with. Well, let's look back a little bit. You know, Ogier has won Australia a number of times, four times I think he's won Australia, and he's won it from first on the road. So he's done it before, it can be done, but we look back to last year, Ogier was first on the road last year, and these new generation World Rally cars, I haven't looked into the stats, but I get the feeling they struggle even more with loose surfaces than the old generation World Rally cars. You know what, it makes sense that they do, they've got more grunt, they've got more traction, more power low down, uh, and when it's loose, it takes that little bit longer to get that power down. We've seen it, haven't we, in opening super specials where our five cars have won because they can get that power down quicker because there's less power. Trying to get the power down in these new generation world rally cars when there's loose gravel, it takes a bit of time. It really does. So I think first on the road seems to be punished even more this year and last year with the new generation cars than perhaps in the past. But last year, Rally Australia, OJ, first on the road, New generation World Rally cars, 28 seconds down after three stages, nearly 50 seconds down at the end of day one. That's telling for me, that really is. Neuville, who was second on the road, well, he went on to win the rally. Oh, it's fascinating, isn't it? I wouldn't want to be leading, I really wouldn't. There is the argument that you should always take the points and put them in the bag because who knows what might happen in Australia. We might get guys going off, we might get mechanical failures. Well, do you know, yeah, points in the bag are fine if it gives you a lead of 10, 12, 14 points in the championship. Points in the bag with a one or two or three point lead or four point lead at the end of Rally Spain going to Australia. Nah, that's when the old grey matter has to be put to use and you have to start thinking about road position. You really do. I can't wait, I really can't wait. I'm getting excited as you can tell by all of these possibilities already. It's, it's just beyond what we could have expected. We had the most magnificent year in the WRC last year. 
and we thought it would be difficult to match that. Well, this year has surpassed it. Okay, last year, we had how many winners? Six or seven winners in the championship this year, just three. That's another telling factor, and it tells us the level that these three are operating at. Tanak, Ogier, Nouvelle. Remember last year, in Toyota, we had Latvala and Lappe winning. At M Sports, we had Ogier, Tanak, and Evans winning. We had a Citroen winning last year, and we had Nouvelle winning last year. The wins were shared out, weren't they? Uh, this year they're not being shared out. It's the boys at the front who have really upped their game to a level that we haven't seen in a very long time. What might, I suppose, still be decisive in this fight for the 2018 driver's title is the support that our top drivers get. Tanak needs no support. Tanak just needs to win. Out and out win for Tanak, bang. He needs to go for it and win. But Nouvelle, well, he's going to get tremendous support this weekend from, in particular, Danny Sordo. That is for sure. Sordo, given a, you know, a level playing field, and it won't quite be a level playing field this weekend, could win this event. I don't think he will. I don't think he will, but he could. But what he could do, perhaps more pertinently, is offer support to Thierry Nouvelle. What Ogier will be looking for is for Elvin Evans, and maybe even Teemo Sunanen, to offer him a little bit of support to try and get themselves somehow in front of Thierry Neuville this weekend. Now, you know what, for Evans, we know he's got the pace, we know he loves the tarmac, and what we know is he's got a great starting position on the Friday. He needs some luck, but if he can make the most of Friday, then yeah, he might well find himself in a position where he can help out his team, team leader this weekend, going into what I think will be the decisive round in Argentina. In Argentina, in Australia, in just a few weeks' time, It'll be fascinating. The three boys at the top have to be absolutely faultless this weekend, and I suspect that they will be. In particular, Nouvelle needs support, maybe from Mickelson, more likely from Sordo. And Ogier needs support from Evans, who is driving for his career. So there's every chance we'll see the best of Evans this weekend. There really is, as I say, he needs a little bit of luck. Uh, it, it, you know, can't, I can't wait. Can't wait to see what happens there. And then we all go to Australia. Oh! Well, it kicks off, guys. Don't forget Thursday evening in Barcelona. We head back to Barcelona for that magnificent street stage, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. But we will get a better handle on how the weekend might unfold come Friday morning. Listen, I haven't talked much about Loeb. Well, I'll tell you why. I think he's a little too rusty to be right at the top. Our boys at the top are at such a level just now that Loeb coming back for his third event of the year, yeah, he, he, it'll be great to watch, that is for sure. But, you know, he showed his rustiness in Mexico uh, when he stopped to change what he thought was a puncture. Shouldn't have stopped. He then showed his rustiness again in Corsica when he made that very strange mistake on what I think was the second stage of the rally. Uh, a little too rusty, Sebastian Loeb, this weekend to be pushing for a win here. Um, but, uh, you know, the one who might upset the apple cart is, as I've said already, Sordo. There is the likes, clearly, of Evans, who are driving, I think, for their careers. Evans and Breen driving for, potentially, their careers this weekend. And then, again, when we get to Australia. So, there are people who could upset the apple cart. But, make no mistake, we are watching our top three championship contenders. They are at another level right now, those three. And it'll be fascinating to see what happens. So... Boys and girls, thank you very much for joining me once again at the kitchen table. I'm going to say this again, I've said it on the last couple of videos, but if you're watching on Facebook, if you don't mind and you haven't done so already, just subscribe. To, sorry, on, on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, just subscribe to my YouTube channel and like the video, massively appreciated. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, yeah, you can like the video, but if you don't mind, if you've enjoyed it and you want your rally friends to see it and not to miss any of these little kitchen table talks, then just share it for me. Press the share button. That would be enormously appreciated as well. So Facebook, like and share. YouTube, subscribe and like. It's very much appreciated. And don't forget, if you would like your mug featured at the kitchen table, just drop me a note. Send me a little message through a Facebook Messenger or put a little note at the bottom of YouTube and we will speak to you again after, after the Sunday in Catalonia when we know what we can expect going in to Rally Australia. I suspect there will be an enormous amount to talk about next week. So, folks, thanks again for joining me at the kitchen table. Join me next week for a post-Catalonia debrief and perhaps a little preview of Rally Australia. Thanks again for joining me.